Hi, and welcome to week five. This week, we're going to study two techniques for supervised learning, naive base classifiers and support vector machines. And we're going to study how they can be used for natural language processing. But in order to do that, we first need to look at the structure of supervised learning. So what we've been doing over the last two weeks is called unsupervised learning. Here, we provide the computer with some training set made up of the features that describe some original document, for example. So we have a vector with features, and then the computer needs to figure out what's similar between those vectors so that we can use those similarities to create clusters. Maybe the features are the different words that related languages have. Maybe the features are the presence or absence of the word sushi or the word restaurant or the word Hanover. So we have sets of features and then the computer tries to find similarities between them so that it can create clusters. It does so so that in the future, when it gets a, a set of features it hasn't seen before, it can decide, oh, this set of features, uh, which describes a document, should go into this cluster, or it's more similar to this other cluster. In that way, the computer is um, learning in an unsupervised manner because we didn't tell it exactly what uh, it should be looking for. We just told it, find similarities between these and give us some clusters. For example, with Shakespeare text, it just found similar groupings, but it didn't have specific names for the clusters, for example. Here, we're going to look at a different technique for machine learning called supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have our vectors with features that describe a document, for example, or a language or anything we want to classify. But in addition to this vector with features, we're going to give each vector an additional field which will be the label. We are going to tell the computer explicitly, these features here, they describe a cat. These here, they describe a cat, a cat. And then this one here describes a not cat, some other thing. So let's say we have, for example, cats and not cats, and we give the computer a list of uh, vectors, some for cats, some for not cats. And then we tell the computer, please find what is it about the features that makes some of these vectors cats and some of these vectors not cats? This problem is called classification. And what we hope to achieve is that in future runs, the computer will get a set of features that it hasn't seen before, and it will be able to compute, for example, the probability that this unseen vector is similar to a cat or is similar to not a cat. Classification is what we'll be studying this week, but there's many other types of supervised learning. Regression is an example. Deep learning is another one that we've been studying later, and so forth. So let's focus on classification. What we need first is a training set. For example, a list of movie reviews. This is an example from our textbook. Whether the review is uh, we'll later see whether the review is positive or negative, but for now we only need the text. The, for example, that a movie is unbelievably disappointing or that it was pathetic. The worst part about it was the boxing scenes. So we have the training set and we will extract some features from it. For example, the presence of the word disappointing, the presence of the word greatest. And in addition to the training data, we have the labels. These labels are the correct classification for each element, and they're the ones that we're aiming towards. For example, we tell the computer explicitly that the review unbelievably disappointing is supposed to be negative. We tell it explicitly that the review, this is the greatest screwball comedy ever filmed, is supposed to be positive. So we have some vector with uh, the features for each item in the training set, and we have labels for whether this is supposed to be positive or negative. We would need to define the features. This is not a trivial task. 
Let's do something very simple for now and use the words as the features, as we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. Maybe the word disappointing can tell us if a review is positive or negative. So um, if, for example, the review is uh, contains the word disappointing, is that review negative? We want to figure out whether the probability of this is high so that if you get the word disappointing, it is very likely that the review is negative or maybe the probability could be low that the word disappointing doesn't really tell you whether the review is positive or negative. And by the way, this is conditional probability like we studied last week. In, in Bayesian terms, this would be read the probability that a review is negative given that we see the word disappointing. So I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video and I'm going to count to five and uh, you tell me, is the prob is uh, a document likely to be negative if you find the word disappointing in it? Look at the little corpus that we have and let me know. The probability is very high. If you find the word disappointing in a document, within our little uh, training set here, the word disappointing only appears in negative documents. And so it is the word disappointed is highly disappointing is highly associated with negative reviews. So this probability here is going to be very high. Again, because we only find it in negative reviews and never in positive reviews. How about a feature like whether the review contains the word greatest or not? If a review contains the word greatest, is it a positive review? Is the, What is the probability of this? I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video and think about it on your own. If the word greatest appears in uh, the training set, it is only associated with positive reviews in this toy training set that we have. Again, the training set determines the behavior of your uh, machine learning algorithm. So because the word greatest only appears in positive reviews, we believe that the probability that a review is positive, given that it contains the word greatest, is very high. Let's give this one more try. Look at the corpus that you have here and try to figure out what is the probability that uh, a review is negative if it has the word was. Is it high or is it low? I'm going to let you pause the video and uh, work it out. So this is interesting. In this tiny training set, it is uh, the word was only appears in negative reviews. So there's a very high probability that the document is negative if it has the word was. However, we know from real life that the word was probably appears in both positive and negative reviews. So it shouldn't really be helpful. This is just an artifact of our training set. And again, the training set will determine a lot of the behavior of your program. So we could use features like the presence or absence of a word to describe a document and then append to it labels like positive or negative. But we could really use any label, such as whether something is about sports or about not sports. Here we have another training set, uh, a bunch of documents that say a great game, the election was over, not a very clean match, a clean but forgettable game, it was a close election. So um, try to work out which words in those documents are very informative towards the category sports. So they only happen in the documents that belong in the category sports. Try to work out which words are very informative for the category not sports. 
So these are words that only occur in documents that are not about sports. Finally, which words don't go either way? You can find these words in both sports and non-sports documents. I'll give you a moment to pause the video, try to work it out, and then come back. So it could be something like this. The words great, game, very clean, match, but forgettable, and game, oh, game is there twice, I'm sorry, um, are very informative of the category sports because they only appear in documents labeled sports. Words like the election was over it close are very informative of the category not sports because they only appear in documents that are labeled not sports. And notice again that we shouldn't expect the word the to be informative about non-sports in real life. It's just an artifact of how the training set is structured. The word a is uninformative because it appears both in sports documents and in not sports documents, such as a great game, but also a close election. Let's look at one final example. This is an example of spam, of junk email. Try to figure out what features you would use to distinguish between spam and non-spam email based on things you see here. I'll give you a moment to pause and think about it. For example, maybe if the email contains the word lucky, uh, it should be flagged as potentially spam. If it contains things like winning, it might be tagged, particularly if it contains winning in all caps. Look at how so many things here are in all caps and uh, regular emails are not written like this. So this could be one thing that we could use to distinguish between spam email and non-spam email. Features like, does it contain the word lucky or not? Does it contain the word winning or not? Does it have uh, many words in all caps or not? In summary, in supervised learning, we need to provide a training set, a series of documents that we want to classify or something, which we ultimately turn into features. And these features are going to describe the, train, the items in the training set. We also have labels. These labels are the classification that we believe to be correct, such as positive or negative, spam or not spam, sports or not sports. So we have the features that describe the document and the label that we've assigned to the document. And then the computer will try to find what is it about this combination of features that tells you that it belongs to that label. This week we're going to look at two methods to do this, naive based classifiers and support vector machines.